this episode with spending time with Bill and seeing how Bill has lived, imagine that as finding one of those letters in the game, our memos in the game, our notes in the game, where it's telling you what happens right. with these side characters. You know, this is just an episode that kind of does that because they can, because this is a TV series. If you're going to do a TV series and you have a moment to like flesh out characters, you have a moment to flesh out this world, and you can do it by telling, because let's admit it, if nothing else, this, this story was beautifully told. And if you can yeah. do that, man, I enjoy that kind of exploration. That's just me. Yeah. Double Toasted Live in Brooklyn, New York is selling very well. Good. Very well. If I were you, and I'm not, but if I were you, I'd get my tickets now. Cause this one might possibly sell out. Yeah. We've yeah. already kind of hit that, halfway. That is the New York way. Yeah. We've already sold half, halfway. Mm -hmm. Halfway to selling out. We're about to fill that theater. So y'all, if I were you, I go get those tickets now by going to x1entertainment.com slash double dash toasted. Let's go ahead and get into our discussion. You know, every Sunday they've been showing The Last of Us, the TV show. Not the video uh, game, yes. the TV show based on the video game on HBO. And being that it's Monday when we do this show, we decide to come in and kind of do recaps of the episodes. I mean, they've been great so far. It only takes one episode, one episode to just derail the whole thing. And so far, The Last of Us on HBO, it's been great. I can... I continue to be impressed with how great this show is, the way it gives nods to the game, the way it gives nods to uh, fans of the game. Uh, but also one of the things that this has done is that it has taken liberties with some changes. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, I, and I think that's a good thing because people like myself who have played that game over and over again, because I love it so much. It's one of the greatest games out there ever. But it's taking those liberties and it's starting to deviate away from the familiar for those people who have mm -hmm. played the game. And the great thing about that is that I think by deviating away from the from the game, it, it has not only given a surprise to the people that know the game so well, but it's expanded on the story so far. You know, it's mm -hmm. taken. I think it's taken a great story and has made it even better for the format that we see it in right now. We've talked about episode one, talked about episode two, and now we're on episode three. And I think episode three has been the biggest departure yet that they've, that they've done from the game. Now you haven't played the game. You started, but you didn't no. finish. Correct. <clears throat> um, so this particular episode right here, and th you know, it's going to be great to talk to you about this because, yeah. you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a different experience for you have not played the game than it is for me who has seen everything with this and know it in great detail. But right. this episode, episode three has people, uh, I don't think it has people divided, but I've had, I've heard some criticisms for this episode. Mm -hmm. And you know what I, I, and I, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think that they did a great job with the episode. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really loving about this as a fan of the game is how they're not only working in visuals from the game, but also actual <laughs> gameplay. Now, before we get into that discussion here and go into detail about that, this episode deals with, and, and this is a spoiler discussion, by the way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is a very spoiler spoilery bit. discussion, so I don't mm -hmm. have to do a lot of setup and tell y'all what's happening. But, you know, just to recap real quick, um, we are dealing with a, a, a character named Bill. And this is, and it's one of those episodes where this is a uh, this is an episode where it it it, it well, they call it a one off where it's it you know it takes place or it's 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 it's, out, it's taking place outside of the main storyline. You know what I mean? It's like there's a bigger mm -hmm. story between two characters, uh, Joel and Ellie. This story right here takes away from them, takes a break from them for a little bit to concentrate on this character's story, who probably does not have a huge impact on the bigger plot line that's going on. First of all, I am impressed, highly impressed by the way that they have gone and brought in all these elements from the game and and and, and have made it a, a, a part of the story and part of the great storytelling of this show. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to just give you an example, like last week we were talking about how and you you mentioned this, too, this is one of your favorite things. We we're talking about how if you remember last week's episode, they were running into uh 
a form of the zombies called clickers. And these right. these are the, the 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 zombies that now they're blind. They got these big uh, 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 crowns. Of, what's that you say? The mushroom heads. The mushroom heads out there. Got these big mushroom <clears throat> crowns on their head. And they locate you by this very primitive form of, uh, of I guess, uh, what would you call it? What bats have? Sonar, man. E- echo sonar in a way. Echo sonar, right, right. And they... The show brought in the feeling of playing the game when you're like in stealth mode and you got to kind of mm-hmm. sneak around the clickers. They mm-hmm. brought that into the into the show without making it feeling like they are, you know, stopping yep. it to say, hey, remember this or, you know, do you remember doing this in the game? No, they made mm-hmm. it feel like it was actually part of the story. <clears throat> He's like. He's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that old gag. <laughs> Hello. Now, <laughs> that's some parts that you recognize from the game because, you know, it's not subtle. It's a huge part of the game. It's a huge part of the game play. And what mm-hmm. I liked about this episode now, uh, this episode, I admired how they gave you uh, a nod to the game that was more subtle. It gave you a nod to the game that, it, you know, it still brought in the game mechanics that you recognize, but they, again, they did it in a way where if you didn't really know this, then you probably wouldn't recognize it. But I don't know if you got that far in the game, but in the game, mm-hmm. you know, searching for supplies and searching for items is right. a huge mm-hmm. part. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I was watching part. this and I was like, look, I don't know if they did this intentionally, but there's a part where they enter a building and they start searching mm-hmm. for stuff. And I said, man, that feels just like the game. Uh, feels yeah. like they brought in that mechanic of one of the most mundane parts of the game, just running around looking for stuff. Yep. They, yep. they yep. actually yep. brought in and worked it into the story and made it feel just as natural as anything else. Okay, I'm gonna take a look around, see if there's anything good. Trust me, it's all been picked over already. Maybe, maybe not. You know, th- if you yeah. played the game, they caught the feeling of going around looking for items uh, just like uh, within the game, man. It's not about, as you say, just bringing the story, the movie, the show to a grinding halt. It's about mm-hmm. making it feel like it's part of the flow of everything else. They had right. some dialogue from the game. Mm-hmm. And they do this several times. They've been doing this. But I never recognize it, man. Even though I played that game several times and I've heard that dialogue several times, it's been years mm-hmm. since I played the game, the first one. And they bring in dialogue and have the characters uh, or the actors repeat the same thing from the game. And it feels so natural that I don't recognize it at all. Rule one, you don't bring up Tess ever. Matter of fact, we can just keep our histories to ourselves. You don't tell anyone about your condition. Anybody who's played the game, if you you know, if you played it recently or you just remember it that well, you'll recognize that that is exact dialogue from the game. Oh, you don't bring up Tess, ever. Matter of fact, we just keep our histories to ourselves. Don't tell anybody about your condition. You know, they change it up just a little bit, right. but again, nah, it's dope. again, I, you know, I, I don't recognize it. And that's good because I don't always want, I want to be, I want to be drawn into this world. You know, I don't want to be a guy who played the game and, it's, now I, and I have my enjoyment of the show stopped every moment to where I'm just kind of like, oh man, I remember them doing that from the game. You know, if you can, if you can do right. it so natural and make people not even recognize it, even though you've been in this world, you've played this game several times, then you're doing your job great. You know, you're doing yeah. exactly what you're supposed to do and that is concentrating on the story alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're absolutely right, man. You know, I've I've played like maybe an hour of the first game, but I've seen multiple cutscenes. I've seen uh, some of my friends play it because I'd rather watch people play this game than play it myself. And uh, a lot of these things you're seeing, you know, I'm seeing as well, especially a lot of the, the, the key points of the game where they are showing it in this uh, you know, series. And for right now, this is how you do an adaption of something. Yeah. They even brought in the point where Ellie in the show found the shirt that you see Ellie wearing in the video game. And they didn't do this thing where they just, you know, had her like trying it on and like putting it up in front of the camera. You know, there's little moments where she saw it, she pulled it out. You know, yep. people I like, like, oh, uh, I, I recognize that. Yep, uh, same. 
But then, you know, when, when she is finally wearing it, you know, she's just walking around, looking around the room. And then even when Joel comes in and he's wearing his shirt from the game, mm-hmm. it's, it is a moment that's meant for us to be like, oh, shit, he's wearing the shirt. But again, immediately we're drawn back into the characters because now we're treated to some witty dialogue or we're treated to the, to the, the, the chemistry that's building between the characters. Well, you look pretty. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your bitch ass. <laughs> Some goddamn yeah. deodorant on. Yeah, put that in your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> this is interested in treating the, the the viewers who know the game to something yeah. that they recognize, but it's not interested in doing it cheaply. It's not interested in cheap Easter eggs, you know? Right. Yeah, again, this is how you, again, this is the adaption that pleases both people, people who haven't seen it and people who know it intimately. This is how you bridge that gap between you know, those two people, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, this, this is, this is good. And they continue to do it through the, through the show, man. There's all kinds of things there that I, I did immediately recognize. I mean, you got the, you got the, uh, the, 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 the arcade machine that Ellie finds, which again, mm. they do in a fun way in the, in the show. You ever played uh, this one? I had a friend who knew everything about this game. There's this one character named Melina who takes off her mask and she has monster teeth and then she swallows you whole and barfs out your bones. Ah. You know, when Bill is introduced in the story, who we'll talk about more in a little bit, we get to mm-hmm. see, you see his truck right here. Oh, yeah. In the game, uh, Bill's truck is in the show right there. Yep. There's even another Easter egg that people say could be, might not be. But again, it feels so natural that it's not interrupting anything. Sometimes it's good to sit back and guess, like, did they mean to do that? Is that a reference to the game? If not, that's cool because, hey, the story just keeps on going. Down in Bill's basement, they say that he has a workbench. You know, workbenches are big in the game for crafting mm-hmm. and whatnot. Right. And that's Bill's basement. And you can see the workbench right over here. That oh, there it is. People say that uh, is a reference to the game. Now, you know, we're talking about how great they're doing. We're talking about how these Easter eggs, you know, they're putting in the familiar, but they're not interrupting anything. So where are these complaints about this episode coming from? Uh, well, a good place to start, again, is to talk about the character of Bill, because right when things start to seem familiar, that, and the, all that stuff uh, starts to change when we meet Bill, man. We, right when we start to think things are, are going along where, where the game is going, you know, it's following the game tightly. We meet Bill, who is a main character. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he's, he's a minor character in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not. He's not. He's not. not you, didn't get, you didn't get to Bill in the game, right? No, not at all. Hey everyone, I know I usually have some sort of funny or crazy segue when I do these ads, but I'm just going to pop in real quick right now and tell you about our sponsor for this segment, and that is Stamps.com. And you need to know about them anyway, because whether you are a business owner or somebody who just uses a lot of postage, you're going to be affected by these postage rates that have increased. Yes, they've increased again, but you don't have to worry about it because Stamps.com, they got you. Stamps.com, they have the best discounts in the industry. They have these rates that you literally cannot find anywhere else, up to 84% off UPS and UPS. Plus, Stamps.com automatically lets you know the cheapest and fastest shipping options that are available to you. They've been in business for over 25 years and have been serving over 1 million businesses. And hey, listen, you're not only saving money, but you're also saving time. And as we all know, time is money. That's why Stamps.com is important to you. You have access to USPS and UPS shipping services right from your computer at any time, day and night. Got no lines to worry about, no traffic, no waiting. You'll get access to UPS and USPS shipping services right from your computer at any time, day and night. Got no lines to worry about, no traffic to deal with, no waiting at all. Use stamps.com to print postage wherever you do your business or right from your home. All you need is a computer and a printer. They'll even send you a free scale so you have everything you need to get started. And if you need a package pickup, it's real easy to schedule one through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell stuff online, Stamps.com works seamlessly with every marketplace and shopping cart out there. So as if Stamps.com wasn't making your life easy already, we're going to make it a lot easier for you to get started with them. Just go to Stamps.com and use the promo code TOASTED to get yourself a four-week free trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. You got no commitments, no contracts. So if you don't like it, hey, no big deal. It's easy. But you're going to love it. All you got to do is use that code right there. Go to stamps.com and use the promo code TOASTED. That is S-T-A-M-P-S dot com and use the promo code T-O-A-S-T-E-D. 
I want to thank Stamps.com for coming in and supporting this part of the show. And of course, as usual, thank you for all your support. Now back to the show. You not knowing the game, this is where things really start to change, man. This is where things mm-hmm. really start to deviate away from the game with the show. Uh, Bill is a minor character in mm. the game. He's just a guy that kind of is there to help Joel and Ellie, which means helps you to just find some equipment and some supplies so you can uh, supply so you can get to your next mission. Uh, and the thing with the, uh, with Bill, he, he's a very different character from the game. He's there to help you out. Right. He's there to help you uh, again, get supplies and get to your next place. He's also you, look to, in order to get those supplies and to get his help. You also got to take a lot of his shit. He's a pain in the ass. That was Plan A, B, C, all the way to fucking Z. And furthermore, tell Tess that she could take this job. Don't you bring Tess into this? Shove it right up nothing to do it. And what he's looking at, we'll talk about in a minute. But mm-hmm. you know, right when we think that the, the perhaps the show is going to follow this story that we see right here, he's going to meet Joel. They're going to be bickering back and forth and arguing and giving each other shit. Uh, we find out very quickly that's not the case with this guy at all. And Bill is played by Nick Offerman in the mm-hmm. in the show. Uh, very different actor that did the mocap and the voice for Bill in the game right here. Um, so here's the big difference. So again, you not know who Bill is. You, you mm-hmm. want to hear what the big differences are with him? Yeah, well, what, well, real quick, not knowing what's happening it was like you said i thought it was going to be a case where okay here we go again me thinking about you know uh walking dead and how that whole thing set up mm-hmm. so i'm thinking okay we're gonna um joe and ellie gonna come and meet him and they're gonna come stay there so it'll be like another farm situation from the walking dead oh, yeah. where they're gonna stay there and get some stuff and then the zombies are gonna come they gotta fight them off then they gotta run away so that was my thinking when i was you know watching this well go ahead okay so first of all <laughs> We're, we're talking about Bill. For anybody's talking about, because if you saw this episode, Bill is gay. So for anybody mm-hmm. who's talking about, oh, here we go with this woke shit, man. You always got to have some gay shit in everything we do now. <laughs> gay shit. We all got to have some gay shit. Gays <laughs> taking everything, man. Everybody about, everybody got to be gay now. You know, listen, the character of Bill was gay in the game. All right. Mm-hmm. The only thing is that his... His 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 sexuality was just a little more subtle. It was just kind of mentioned and hinted at. He used when referring to his his lover or whatever. He said words like that was my partner. Uh, you know, we used to do things together. We used to be together. And there's some other big differences with this. So listen, the thing is in the game, uh, Bill was also gay. Just. And, a, and a, again, in a very more subtle way. So this is not some woke shit before anybody starts saying that. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, in the show, we find out that Bill is, is a survivalist. And, yep. and he also happens to be uh, gay also. So gay that he has traps where he traps other gay dudes. And <laughs> got, got gay traps out there. <laughs> gay traps. <laughs> hey, tell Julian to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> just, just digging holes and catching the gay dudes out there, man. <laughs> um, nah, and, he, and, and in this episode, he wants to be alone. He loves the fact that he's he hates the world, is, loves it that nobody else is around. He, uh, he, you know, he has everything down. Got his generator. His home is nice. He's got plenty of wine. He knows how to hunt. He's got fine food and everything. And now this guy's coming in and it's kind of throwing everything off. He doesn't want to kill the guy, but it's a dangerous thing to let people go because you're taking a risk of them letting somebody else know your location. Oh, yeah. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch. It was a restaurant. <laughs> Blam! <laughs> Smart ass. You got jokes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bullet for lunch right now. Now, one of the things I will say, you ever watch the show White Lotus? Uh, oh, I saw the second season. So the guy that he captures is, mm-hmm. I mean, and people probably already figured this out. If, you know, and they probably figured it out when they were watching the, the show, if they knew the game well. Uh, the guy he captures is Frank. The guy that is the mentioned lover from the game. I didn't know that that guy was the same dude from White Lotus. The guy that the the, the manager of the resort. Is it season one or season two? Season one. Hey, you're gay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Yeah, he did. He, who? 
Uh, White Lotus happens to be an HBO show, and in the show, he's also gay there. Oh, it is. Typecast. Hey, you're gay. Yes, I'm gay. He had sex with men. It's a telltale sign. <laughs> he's that guy. I, oh, forgot the actor's name, but he's great. He's an Australian actor. Uh, That's great, true. An actor who's so great that I did not recognize him as the same guy from White Lotus, man. I've been watching White Lotus a little bit. But anyway, you know, uh, within the story, and this is getting into the complaints that people have. It's not it's not just the gay thing either. Not people are not complaining about have not been complaining about that. It's a little it's another issue that they have here. And it has to deal more with Bill's storyline. Uh so the storyline is of course, coincidentally, you know, what, what hey, what are the chances? I caught another gay dude and I happen to be gay too. You know, they they fall in love, kiss, make out, end up growing old together. This a lot of people have been praising this because they say that this is a very it was a beautifully told romantic story. You know, not just a gay story. It was a beautifully mm-hmm. told romantic story uh, that. OK, now, while not a, a big part of the main plot line, it was really cool to see this because it was so emotional. It had some people in tears even. Uh, I've read some criticisms of this saying that this added nothing to the bigger story except for. Maybe if you really want to tie it in, a one-time meeting with, with Tess and Joel. There's stuff we have in the QZ that you don't have here. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. Well, yeah, he ain't bullshitting. I've been, I've been doing what he says. <laughs> Damn it. You know, uh, also it's a big tie-in to the the radio that we saw at the beginning of uh, right. Of 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 the, of the first season where you know they they have codes with eighty songs and they set that up in this mm-hmm. episode uh, yep. episode three right here mm-hmm. you know there's the radio right there cuts on you start to hear Depeche Mode play or Depeche Mode play so you know it's a tie into that again if you really want to tie it to something but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people are saying okay that's that that's cool but then again that is what does this lend to the bigger story right here uh first of all Oz, you saw it we talked about it what'd you think of this episode oh yeah i loved it man i, I loved it a lot you know uh coming from a place where i didn't know exactly what was going to happen and have my own uh pre-decisions of what i thought was going to happen and to have that just dashed away and to, to find out that this was pretty much you know a, a love story about two men i thought it was fantastic it couldn't have been it, it could have been a man and a woman could have been two women it didn't matter because the way it was it was it was laid out the way it was told the way it was acted it was just it was just phenomenal to me you know the way they uh they set everything up you know and this and just to have you know them play this thing out you know as a uh, as a standalone yeah you know it was very bold of them to do that you know and uh, the fact that they were able to sprinkle in okay oh yeah that's right joel and ellie yeah those yeah. guys let's kind of yeah. bring them in somehow but not just force them in weave them in as well to let you know that this is part of a bigger thing that's going on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and how it all plays out and why they're important and, and how he got there. And, you know, cause uh, if you weren't hung up on one thing, you'd be hung up on something else. Right. So it's, it, it was good to see that, you know, um, why, why is Joel trying to go do something? Where is he going? Okay. Yeah. Boom. He's going to see this guy. And why are you going to see him? Because he has these guns. Well, how do you get these guns? And, it was just a good way to kind of round everything out. So while, so when the end of this episode does happen, you know, everything ties in nicely and those beats are hit very, very well. While telling this great love story that I did not see coming. Yeah. I, I, again, <laughs> as somebody who has played the game, I did not see this shit coming at all, man. No. Took me no. totally off guard. And so to answer that, 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 that or, or address that, that criticism of, was it, or is this something that takes away from the main story, which is what people have been saying? We didn't we didn't really need this. You know, it, at least if you wanted it, it was sweet. It was nice. Mm-hmm. I'm down with it. I, you know, I, I love gay love, you know, all that, whatever, man. But, you know, the, the people saying we do we need a whole episode dedicated to it. Uh, to those people who say that it wasn't necessary. I disagree heavily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is why. Because I think that this is taking advantage of uh, of the TV show format. Bill's time on the screen might not be much in the video game, but Bill is cranky and kind of unbearable, man, and uh, and kind of a pain in the ass. 
and his relationship with Frank. So for those of you who saw this this show and don't know the game, and you saw you know all this these nice romantic moments, that is the total opposite in the game. Hmm. His relationship with Frank is anything but romantic. <laughs> Frank left this earth saying, "I hate you, Bill. I hate the <laughs> out of you, man." <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. After so Frank's story. You know, Frank in the game, Frank wasn't found in some gay trap hole, you know, and, and mm. being treated to a nice romantic dinner and wine and all that kind of stuff. No, Frank in the game, Frank hung himself because Frank oh, was trying shit. to, you, that's Frank right there, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a twist right there. Yeah, Frank hung, <laughs> Frank hung himself because Frank hated Bill so much that, because Bill didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to leave or explore the world or anything. He's wanted yeah. to stay, he wanted to stay trapped within his traps. So he says, you know what? I hate you. I'm feeling trapped with you. So I'm, I'm leaving. And maybe Bill was right because the moment he got out there, then Dom just started munching on his ass and he got bit. And so before he could turn, he hung himself. But the funny thing is, is that, so this man says, you know what? Uh, I got bit several times. I got about, I don't know, an hour or so left on this earth. You know what? I'm on, I, I'm gonna write a letter and let Bill know how much I hate him. <laughs> this fool's Jesus. his his last act on earth was to write this this letter that Joel found. And I'll read some of it for you. It says, Well, Bill, I doubt you will ever find this note because you were too scared to ever make it past this part of town. But if for some reason you did, I want you to know I hated your guts. <laughs> <laughs> I grew tired of this shitty town and of your setting your ways attitude. I wanted more from life than this. And you could never get that. And that stupid battery you kept moaning about. I got it. So he stole from his ass, too, man. Jesus, man. Got him, too. Yeah. Man, what a man. He said, babe, but I guess you were right. Trying to leave this town will kill me. Still better than spending it with your stupid ass. Good luck, <laughs> Frank. Good luck. Peace out, bitch. <laughs> That's what I said, Pat. Peace out, bitch. <laughs> Jeez. Good luck and f you, Frank. <laughs> what a difference. Wow, yeah, man. The way they the way this is here and the way it is in, in the show, I can see how people be like, what the hell? And hopefully in, in a good way, because I mean, all I can think about is when you know Bill found Frank was like, okay, what's Frank up to? What is Frank gonna do? You know, I don't trust this guy. You know what I mean? And 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 they have the, the the flashback of you know the flash forward of three years later from that time. I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. And you know, you felt sorry for Bill. You know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Offerman. Yeah, Nick Offerman. Nick, Nick Offerman. Yeah, yeah. He, he played it. He played it fantastic. Even by saying and nothing, you fell in love with him because you knew he was hiding something and he was trying to get something out. Yeah, he didn't know how to do it. So you fell in love with him and you didn't want anything to happen to him. So you yeah. were worried that Frank was going to be an asshole. But once you figured out that he wasn't, you loved them both even more. Knowing how much how much Frank was an asshole in the in in in, in the game <laughs> and how much he hated Bill, I kept yeah. watching this and kept thinking like, all right, when it looks nice now, but when is this when is this this, this relationship going to go south? And right. When is, see, and, and when is when is Frank going to betray him? When is wow. when is, when is Frank going to screw him over? So wow. up until the that, very end, I was sitting up there on pins and needles, thinking like, "This is not going to last. This is too good to be true. This, wow, this, this, nothing good's going to come out of this." And you see how they did that? That's great. From somebody like myself who have not haven't hasn't played the game to pretty much feel the same way you were feeling, but coming from another direction, yeah, but still feeling the same way. That's that's fantastic because I, I I did not trust him for a very long time. No, until some point, like okay, I guess he's good. But you know, you kept that feeling going on longer because you knew reading that goddamn letter that the shoe could drop at any minute. Now that's that's awesome. Yeah, that letter. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason why I was I was expecting this to be a bad situation, the moment that 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 Bill found him, is because mm -hmm. this is. This is the apocalypse, the zombie apocalypse. Uh, Walking Dead has conditioned me to just looking at the darkness and bleakness and hopelessness and everything. Exactly. And so I looked at this and I, I was going by Walking Dead rules. I was like, this is not going to yep. be this is this is not going to end well. And look, if you really, really want to get down to it, did it end well? I mean, yes and no, depending on how you look at it. 
the right. episode ended with them committing mutual suicide. Yeah. But at the same time, they lived to be old. They lived to be yeah. happy. They were happy with each other. They were satisfied. And they just said when one was dying because of an illness that I don't know what the hell it was. They never said it was how they figured it out. It I don't like, know. It looked but, like MS. Yeah. But it was killing Frank. But, yeah. you know, he was going to die anyway. And this other guy said, hey, look, there's nothing left for me in the world. But you, we all got to go at some point. So they went on their own terms and they went peacefully, yeah. you know. So yeah. if you look at it that way, it's not all that. It's bittersweet, a little tragic. But, hey, you know, they got to live longer than most people in this world. And I kept thinking, man, you know something? There's nothing wrong with taking a story that is mostly about how people are horrible to each other, how the world is, how the world is dark and how the world is bleak and showing mm -hmm. people that there is still hope, that there is still love, that there is, mm -hmm. you know, that, that the people still have humanity. I think that's fine, man, because I figured this, this show is going to get a little more oppressive with this, with, with this darkness. And it's OK to have a, a nice, refreshing moment, a break to show that things sometimes can be not only good, but again, very hopeful and very loving and very sweet. You know, that's 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 something that's going to distinguish it from something like The Walking Dead, too. Yeah, no, you're you're right, man. And I want to I don't want to say that you know this ending was probably the, the happiest ending that we're probably going to see <laughs> in this yeah. show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, and I thought it was really touching how you know didn't have to see them, you know, in bed. No, dead. You know what I mean? All you had to do was look at that window. That was it. That's all you needed to see. I thought that was perfect. Oh yeah, when they showed they yeah, it was it was really uh and they could have they they, they could have gone for the shock. They could have gone for like showing you the dead bodies of, of both of yeah. them. I, I thought that was a cool thing. Like we left the window open so the place wouldn't stink. Don't come look at our yep. bodies. Where where yep. we are, we're happy, you know, it's fine. Yep. That uh, was cool. Yeah, leave it to leave it up to the, you know, whatever happens with them, leave it up, leave that up to the viewer's imagination. Yep. You know, um, but I tell you, for those who are saying it doesn't lend itself to the bigger story, I completely disagree with that, too. And I don't think if you're saying that it does not lend itself to the bigger story, you are not paying attention to what's happening right, right here, because it most certainly does. Right. I will argue you down with that, man. It is this is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the dance floor. <laughs> uh, I, I will argue with you for weeks about this, saying that it, it does not lend itself to the bigger story. Uh, and I will tell you how and I'll tell you why. Because, again, for those who remember the episode, while we're talking about letters, after Bill committed suicide with his lover, Frank, he left a letter for Joel. Mm -hmm. And that last part of Bill's letter to Joel, where he mentions Tess that is a big turning point for Joel. Mm -hmm. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep. And that's Bill saying, use them to keep. I left all my weapons for you. Use them to keep Tess, Tess safe. Safe. Yeah. And all of us knowing what happened to Tess is heartbreaking because Tess is gone. Now, the mm -hmm. reason why the reason why this is, this has a huge impact on the story right here. Mm -hmm. Uh it's that moment when that's mentioned, when Tess's name is mentioned in the letter. It's that moment when Joel realizes that he has nothing, man. He lost, he lost Tess, who was probably the biggest thing to be in the love of his life in this world. He lost his daughter. And now, even though, even though they weren't close, even though uh, Joel had to tell him, get that gun out of my face. Even though they, you know, they can't claim to be close, he doesn't have Bill anymore. Probably the closest thing he did have to a friend. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> the reason why this is important is because now that Joel has nothing, now that Joel has lost everything, the only thing he has left now is Ellie. You know, the only that's yep. the, that's this is the thing that's going to actually this is a crucial moment that's going to to actually make him drawn be drawn closer to Ellie right here. Mm -hmm. You know, did, now, did we need a, a whole episode for that? I'll say no. No, we didn't. But mm -hmm. again, I like that they took advantage of the series format to use that moment with Bill to expand this world. 
You know, we, yeah. you can't do that in the movie. We don't have time for it. But with a show, we can actually explore this world a little bit. Uh, and look at it this way. If you really want to, if you really want to get down to it, this episode with spending time with Bill and seeing how Bill has lived, imagine that as finding one of those letters in the game, our memos in the game, our notes in the game, where it's telling you what happens right. with these side characters. You know, this is just an episode that kind of does that because they can, because this is a TV series. If you're going to do a TV series and you have a moment to like flesh out characters, you have a moment to flesh out this world. And you can do it by telling, because let's admit it, if nothing else, is this story was beautifully told. And if you can yeah. do that, man, I enjoy that kind of exploration. That's just me. Yeah. You know, look, I'm not some person who's over, who's who champions certain lifestyles and social movements and whatnot because it's the it's the hip thing to do. I, I'm not like that. When I say that I'm rooting on a certain group, or I have somebody's back. I sincerely mean that. And so, yeah. you know, I've been I've been complaining for the longest time about how movies. And studios, and especially movie studios, how they've been patting themselves on the back, talking about, "Hey, look at the look at this representation that we got. Hey, we got the first gay this and the first gay that." And you right. know what they, they and they never let them have intimate moments. They never showed right. you know they never let them have their spotlight. And right. it was it was just cool to see this show actually tell a gay romantic story with intimacy. They did it fantastic. And again, the way it was done, the way it was acted, the way it was written, portrayed, you know, it wasn't gratuitous. It wasn't, hey, look at me. I'm gay and I'm going to kiss and go down on somebody. No, it was very <laughs> subtle. It was very sweet. Yeah. You could have, like I said, it could have been anybody there. They just told a very good story, you know, and they had great actors, you know, playing these parts. So, I, you know, whether it was them or other people didn't matter. I think it was, I think it was fantastic. Yeah. But, to, to have, you know, that representation there and have it come off so seam seamlessly, at least for me, you know what I mean? And yeah. not have me say, okay, some guys are kissing. I didn't, that didn't go through my head at all. No. I was like, okay, thank God. You know what I mean? You guys have found each other because I like both of you. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, and that's, I think that's paramount when it comes to writing these things and seeing, you know, all of these different type of people in the world. You should just see them as, you know, who they're being, who they're being portrayed as. And they're just, you know, people who are getting to know each other and mm -hmm. who are falling in love, man. That's it. Hey, you, man, you hit on something that I think is really important that I think was very mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that they didn't, they didn't just show them like gay dudes being horny yeah, kind of yeah. Stuff. because <laughs> yeah. man i saw listen I, I like this movie i'm not gonna mention it by name but i saw this movie and i liked it but it really was with just a bunch of horny gay dudes man it was i mean it, the movie was close to being a gay orgy and, i think i know what movie you're talking about yeah man and, and i like the movie like i, I there's right. nothing wrong with it. it was a comedy that's what right. they were supposed to do but again right you know it was it was living up to that whole thing of gay dudes are horny and they are but you know it was just like cool to see as you said man this being more sweet than than yeah, horny. It was, it's it, beautifully it was, told, man. It was beautifully yes. told, if you ask me. Yes. That's just, it, it that's was, just it, me. You hit it on the head. It was sweet. Yeah. yeah. It was very sweet. And that's that's what got to me. So oh, this is awesome. This is cool. I, I wanted to meet, I wanted to go to that place and have dinner with them too. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. That's how man. We can go there and have some dinner with these guys. I was just like, you know what? I want to commit suicide with them too, man. That was so you know, nice. Pour, pour me a glass of cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some of that cyanide wine, please. Yeah. So I'll spoon with you guys too. Let's go. Yeah, I want to take a nap. <laughs> so yeah, man. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful story, man. It was, it was. Yeah. I really, I really enjoyed it. 